to be Carte's Crossing as we look at the new Sadatha Tarot. So excited. Okay, so this comes in a tuck box. Okay, so I'll be putting that to one side. I won't be using the tuck box because I don't like to um, real, I want to keep the boxes beautiful. Okay, it does come, of course, with the Low Scarabio card here and then the title card as well. That's the back of the card, which I quite like that sort of pastel -y sort of shade. It's got a very gentle energy when I opened it. It does come with a little white book, which does have quite a little bit of information. Not a lot of information, but certainly enough to understand what the creator was thinking about each card. So there's quite a bit in there. So it's quite a valuable little book, actually, with working with this deck. When you want to work not just the normal tarot, but wanting to sort of work with the mudras, the um, connection with the Siddhartha Buddha. So you want to sort of get into it a little bit more by working with the little white book. It does have one little spread at the back, which is called the Mandala Spread which is quite cool, a Mandela reading spread. Okay, it does have five cards to it. Um, so it does go, um, which is quite good. The card in the middle, the space card, the east of the spread, south of the spread, the west and the north. So I'll go into that later. But right now, um, it does talk a little bit about, oh, that's the spread there for those that want to know. Okay, Mandela spread. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so it does talk about um, what the deck's about, what it means in regards to Buddhism and tarot working together. It's quite good. It does talk about the Siddhartha tarot. And it does talk about the structure of the deck, um, what the major arcana are and what the minor arcana are. So... I think for meditation, reflection, pulling a card a day, I think you, for yourself, when you're sort of discovering the deck, learning the deck, getting to know the deck, I think the little white book is actually a really integral part of um, this deck. I think it's really important when you're learning for yourself, when you're doing meditations, cards for reflection. This is a really great little, um, little guidebook for that. So this is going to be a really integral part of this, working with this deck, is the guidebook. So as you can see, we've got the um, cards. The titles are very um, clear. Then you've got cups, pentacles, wands, and swords. Um, cups and lotuses. Got the coins does go into each of the symbols and things. So it does go into a little bit more, of course, with the different colours and um, what they all mean and all that sort of thing. So let's have a look at the imagery anyway. So we begin with the full. Wow. So it does talk about each of the deities in the um, book as well, which is quite an important like I said, it's quite an integral part of learning, developing. But you could read, I mean, if you've read tarot for a long time, you can, of course, read the tarot as tarot, of course, without going into, you know, you can use your intuition, your thoughts, your ideas, your the meanings of the cards. Oh, the imagery is gorgeous. The artwork's really neat. Oh, I love the strength card. Okay, so. Oh, okay, the hermit is nine. What was eight? Oh, eight is justice. So we've got eight is justice and eleven as strength in this card. Okay, so it's not the traditional um, right away smith type of um, that. So interesting.
um, numerological order is what I was trying to say. Ant Man, death. Oh, let's look at death. Wow. So let me read what death is because this just fascinates. That just fasc that card fascinates. I love seeing what they what they mean. So let's have a look at death in this. Okay, this is Yamantaka. The great manifestation of Manjish Jushri Manjushri. Destroyer of Yama. The king of the underworld, a guide through abrupt change towards life or death. A guide to walk through abrupt change. Yamantaka, destroyer of Yama. Interesting. So, it's just got deep transformation, death, rebirth, end of attachment. Just got the normal things, end of an illusion, radical purification, healthy breakthrough, inner revolution. It's got some really good keywords in the book too, which is actually really good. I think the keywords are quite good. They just give you that alternative to sort of, you're not going to memorize them all, but it just gives you that that um, to use. The tower is interesting. Okay, so we go into cups now, which is the lotus. Okay, so looking at the cups. So just to have a look. Okay, so the cups were red, fire, lotus. The sacred symbol is, sorry, syllable. The sacred syllable is Hira, H-R-I-H. Cardinal point is west, and it comes life of Siddhartha. Amitabha is the Buddha of infinite light. He represents the transformation of lust and desire into wisdom. He purifies from attachment. His element is fire, which consumes. So cups is fire in this one. Cups is fire. Oh, very different. Okay, so cups is fire. Lust. So the transformation of lust and desire into wisdom. He purifies from attachment. His element is fire which consumes all things and thus has the power to burn away all illusions. Okay. Okay, interesting. Okay, next we've got pentacles, which is yellow, earth, rama, tram, tram is the sacred syllable. Cardinal point is south, the great masters. Rama Shiva, 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 Shiva is the Buddha who fights covetousness. He, he helps to maintain a humble spirit. His element is earth, he possesses the wisdom of Justice transforming a dull mind to a sharp one. He dispenses spiritual wealth without fear of running out, for he possesses an infinite supply of it. Okay. Earth. love the imagery. It's just neat. There's going to be a lot of work with this, I think. Oh, 
Knight of Pentacles here, a bit of a balancing act too, as you move forward. Right, Wands. Okay. So, Vajara. Or uh, Vajra. Vajra, sorry. Blue. Okay. Water. Hum, East. Okay, that's the symbol of Vajra. Vajra. Hum is the sacred syllable. And the cardinal point is East. And it's the monks and their tools. Akushva is the Buddha who transforms hatred and aversion into wisdom. His element is water. As long as space exists and as long as there are living beings, Akushva will continue to overcome the misery of the world. Just want to have a look at what 10 is in this one. Well, like responsibility, extra work, wholeness, offer, really. Okay, interesting. And then we've got the swords. Is double Vajra. So we have the Vajra and then the double Vajra. Okay, so this is green air, double vajra, om, ah, uh, it's the sacred, sorry, ah uh, is the sacred syllable, cardinal point self, and it's the charm dance. And Humidia Shida is the Buddha symbolizing success without obstacles. His element is air whose wind sweeps away all feelings of envy. He presides over the path that leads to overcoming fear, transforming envy and jealousy into realized wisdom. Okay. I do like the imagery. Okay, so let's shuffle. Okay, so let's move this up a bit. Okay, so we want to look at the spread. So let's have a look at what these cards are. 
I showed you that. Okay, one in the center. Then we have two to the west. Three to the south, four to the east, and five. No, two to the east. Three to the south, four to the west, and five to the north. Right, so let's have a look and see what this spread is all about. Okay, so a method for consulting the Siddhartha Tarot is to lay out the mandala of the five Kiyani Buddhas. It's important to see the tarot not as a divination but as a meditation that allows us to reflect on the nature of the mind. I realize a relation to the question posed to the cards, a moment of pause in which to develop greater inner awareness, a practical boom to understand where we're going, what we are doing, and why we function in ways we do, a youthful act to free ourselves from suffering. And after shuffling the deck, arrange all of the inverted cards on a flat surface. Choose five cards, keep them upside down, and arrange them according to the pattern on page two. Turn the cards over one by one and read them in that order. So let me just lay out the cards first. Okay, so this is just to show you. Okay, so this is card one. Okay. Two. Three. And five. Okay, so let's have a look. So card number one. The card in the middle is the space card. It asks the querent, what is key to truly being yourself in this situation? Oh, interesting. Okay, I've got the devil reversed. To me, it's, it's about, definitely about breaking free from what's been holding me tight. But let's have a look and see what else, you know, to me, it's that sense of look, acknowledging that it, habits acknowledging what's going on in my life and allowing myself to move few that's what is tr the key to truly being myself in the situation is making sure that i break free from what is but let's have a look and see what it says in the book in regards to the devil okay, this is interesting so the devil is here it has kurukula the Dakini Diva of Enlightened Magic, a seductive enchantress who transforms seduction into a mystical expression of wisdom. So to me, so this is all about the passion, seduction, great creativity, possession, obsession with creation, occult, power of the unconscious, material detachment, and taste for the forbidden. So if I'm looking at it being my key to truly being myself, what is the key to truly being myself in this situation? And like I said, I feel like it's like breaking free. It's definitely about the passion, about being passionate, being creative, being creative. Um, maybe it's definitely about dealing with the unconscious, being able to really detach from the material aspect in life. Interesting card. Okay, so the first, so the next card here. Is here, oops. So card number two. Okay, we've got five of wands. Okay, so card two is the east of the spread. The card asks the quest, the querent, 
what resources, means, or allies can help you. So who, what or who can help you. And what do I get? Five of Wands. Well, that's about maybe dealing with any conflict, any challenges. It's super important here. Okay, so five. Kuba exercising. So what can actually help? What resources can help can actually help me? Okay, Fuba. Um, exercising evil, cutting diseases, tension, conflict, and competition. So what can actually help me? The release of any conflict or anything that goes on. Um, releasing any sort of feel anything that feels negative. Releasing any conflicts and things like that. Interesting card. Okay, card number three is South of the Spread. The card asks, what action would prove helpful? And here we've got Knight of Swords. So I really want to move these around. Okay, so Knight of Swords. Okay, Omagashida on Garuda. Okay, this is about neutralize poisonous emotions, quick thinking, ambition, action, planning for success. So yeah, so what did I, see? what was the, thing? so number three was, What action would prove helpful? To me, it's about making sure you've got plans and things in place. So here it is about breaking free. Okay, breaking free from what is. Um, dealing with any conflict honestly with integrity. Making sure you've made, I've made some plans. Which is going to be helpful. To the West, the card asks, what has to change? On the way to your goal. So what's actually got to change? Six of Pentacles. Okay, Six of Pentacles is Padma Sambhava, a foundation, generosity, cha charity, giving without wanting anything in return. Um, so what needs to change? Uh, how much I give, how much, what I give, I think it's about finding a sense of harmony in my well-being, but also with how much I get, making sure that I um, receive as much as I'm giving, and I feel like there's a sense of need of, I do need to be careful to make sure that there is that sense of, of harmony in um, how much I give to how much I receive, and energy-wise, I think this is very much about my well-being, it's about breaking free from bad habits. Okay, so the last card here we have, card number five. In the north, the card asks, what is your goal? The karma to be to be burned in this situation. And it's nine of wands, which is definitely about that sense of surviving, that sense of um, to keep going, don't give up, um, that sense of, okay, so we've got... Um, Damaru and Kangli, and it talks about humility, resilience, test of faith, limits, and invocation. So limits, definitely about how I, so what was the thing again? What is your goal? The karma to be burned in the situation. So my goal is definitely about persevering, to not give up, to have that sense of, um, Resil humility, resilience, being resilient in all aspects of my life. What an interesting reading. 
so yeah overall i think this is a great deck i think this is going to take me some time i mean if i'm really going to use the deck um the book it would definitely take some time to get to know um meditation reflection a card a day sort of thing to start with and i just sort of really feel like it's a deck that i'm going to enjoy exploring okay so that's it from me don't forget to check the links down below check the links on my channel like subscribe and ring the bell so you know when the next video will be uploaded take care and bless us